Let's see everyone to be seated. And once again, please remember that uh, the social hall downstairs is also set up to be able to hear her friend. It's been a long year. It's the first year without Chaim. A long year since I stood in this very place in disbelief that we can no longer daven for Yosef Chaim Yisachar, for our friend that embraced the fullness of life. He was one of those people that gave happiness and cheerfulness, and the gifts that make the long days seem a little shorter and lighten up times of dreariness. And that's why he had many friends and many more simply enjoyed spending time with him. And that's why the year with Archaim did not pass quickly at all. From his early years, he had no patience for facades and for polished exteriors and for shallow pretense. As he matured, he learned to play the game of this part of life. He gave karma to everybody. And he got into trouble much less frequently as a result. And yet he never surrendered his appreciation for the genuine, his appreciation for the sincere. And that only grew. He became an endearing balance between our spiritual core that yearns for meaningfulness and the world of materialism and toys in which we find ourselves. Endearing because he was full of life and full of fun and endearing because he was genuine and honest. And that defined his music, that defined his song, that defined his marriage with Tal, And that is why we knew that we could learn from Chaim the lessons that we hope never to have to put into practice again. The lessons of Amuna when life is unkind, and seeking and finding the Rabboni Sholem when he's distant and hidden from us. Two weeks ago, we read about the Ptira of Noda Aviu. And this past Shabbos, we were reminded of that once again. Their brothers and their father was told not to mourn, but to continue the Avodah. And they were promised Yisrael Yivkuas Asreifu Asher Saraf Hashem. The Klal Yisrael, the entire Tzibur, will mourn their passing. Simply put, that means that they didn't have to mourn because Klal Yisrael would mourn. Tonight, we can give this another meaning. That watching the father and the brothers of Nodav Aviu maintain their avoda. that will remind us of how much we are missing and not having another via view, how much more there could have been. Watching the continued avod of Tao, the entire Feigenbaum and Horowitz families, continuing to remember the unbelievable strength of Chaim in his last parsha, the emails that were full of love and full of strength will continue to remind us our friend joins us this evening, and we are indebted to you for that. My friend, you are one of the few souls and one of the very gifted voices to whom Claudius Road turns for inspiration. We have all been moved by your words, we have learned from your shiurim, and have become more thoughtful and more mindful because of your writings. Tonight, our Yisrochar friend helps us continue the avod of Chaim to live with greater meaning and with greater sincerity and with greater depth and greater joy. Our friend.
Gershus, <coughs> the Mora de Asra, Moron of Rabbon of Rabbeisai, ladies and gentlemen. I obviously did not know the Nifter, but last week as I was walking to the yeshiva, someone who I don't know, I don't think he's a part of the yeshiva, even though he could be, because I do not know 90% of the people who attend the yeshiva, he handed me several emails and said, these are emails that Chaim wrote. And I would expect the, the uh, emuna to hira, the, the, the unadulterated faith that he exhibited in, in, the, in the situation that he was in, I would expect such emuna of literally an autumn goddle. But from, quote, a poshetayid, quote, a simple Jew, unquote, one would not couldn't imagine that in on such trying times how he never lost his amuna. And therefore, looking at the crowd tonight, even in my delusions of grandeur, I do not think everybody is here for me. I think they're here because this was a very, very special individual and that this community came together and comes together, and therefore it should, this should be a schus li'ili nishmosai, and he should be a melitziesher for his wife, for his family, and for this entire community, and that we shall only come for besuris taives and yeshuais and achamais. In trying to settle on a topic for tonight's drusha, I was in touch with someone named Mr. Yeager, who, only, who I only know through emails. We went back and forth, what, should, what topic should we pick? We settled on the topic of, of Shabbos. Truth be told, there was no particular reason why we pick this particular topic. But uh, listening to yesterday's Kriyas HaTeirah, all of a sudden, a connection struck me that maybe, as so many areas of life, this is also bashert. You know, Parshas Kedoshim begins and ends with the same theme. And that is an exhortation to Klau Yisrael to become a holy people. Daberel ben Koladas ben Yisrael amartal ehem which simply means become a holy people. The second to the last posik in Parshas Kedoshim is V'yisimli Kedoshim ki Kedosh ani Hashem v'avdil eschem min ho'amim li oisli. That's the beginning of the end of the parasha. You should become Kedoshim, you should become a holy people. Let me ask you a question, and myself included. Do you feel holy? Do we consider ourselves Kedashim? Heiligemenshim? Are we frum? Yes, we're very frum. Are we very observant? Yes, we are very observant. Most of us are probably more observant than our parents. And we're certainly more knowledgeable. We're very medaktic, but mitzvahs, the level of kashras that we observe far exceeds the generations past. People are learning more today than perhaps in centuries. There are more people that are learning daf yemi today than any other time in Jewish history. The amount of Jewish scholarship that comes forth literally on a weekly basis is nothing less than breathtaking. Sforum on all types of topics that one would not even dream about. Not long ago, I walked into a Sforum store and I saw a Sefer, a big, thick Sefer called Hachek Bahalacha, which all the halachas of a check, does it have it in Kesef or not? One can get a Mincha Minyan in every major city in the United States. 
So we're very medactic b'mitzvahs, we're very frum, we're very observant, we're very knowledgeable. But are we holy? Are we halik? Are we Kaddish? And I think that most of us could not answer that in the affirmative. So I have a suggestion tonight. It's called keeping Shabbos. At that point, you're probably thinking to yourself, keeping Shabbos? Who does this guy think he's speaking to? Most of you are probably Shemri Shabbos, and most of you have probably been keeping Shabbos your entire lives. So what does it mean that Shabbos is the key to becoming holy? We keep Shabbos, and yet we don't feel all that holy. So let me try to explain what I mean. There's a stira, a contradiction in two Gemaras, actually a Bavli and a Yushalmi. The Bavli says, Omar Rabbi Yechonim, Yishim Rabbi Shim ben Yechoi, Lamoli, Misham and Yisrael, Shtei Shabbosah is Kehilchasan, Miyad Nigol. A famous Gemara. If Chal Yisrael were only to keep two Shabbosah is Kehilchasan, then the Geula would come immediately. And yet the Rishalmi says in Mesech the Tainis, Omer of Levi, Ilu Hay Yisrael Misham and Shabbos Achas Ketikna Miyad Hoya Ben David Ba. If Klau Yisrael would keep but one Shabbos, the Mashiach would come right away. So which is it? Is it two Shabbosais or is it one Shabbos? Is it Ilamoli Misham Yisrael Shtei Shabbosais or is it Misham and Shabbos Achas. The answer is that there's a subtle difference in the Lashon and the language of the two statements of the Gemara. The Lashon of the, of the Bavli is Misham and Shtei Shabbos Ais Kihil Chosam. They keep Shabbos as the Halacha demands. However, the Lashon of the Yushalmi is Misham and Shabbos Achas Kitikna. Ketikna in English means visedavzain. Means the way it should be. And that's the difference between the two Gemaras. And that's really our difference. Yes, we are Mishamis Shabbos Kihil Chosa. We keep the halachas. We know the halachas. There's so many books on Shabbos. We make the chalant right. We're we don't buy, we're not buyer. We're not all. Oh, it's it's kehil kehil chasa. But nevertheless, it's not ketikna. It's not the way it really should be. In fact, the Chofetz Chaim once pointed out that this is alluded to in a zimra that we sang, some of us sing on on, on Friday night. Kol mekari shvi karoi loy. Shemer Shabbos Kados Mechaloloi. Yeah, we're Shemer Shabbos Kados Mechaloloi. We're not Mechalo Shabbos. We're not Ivar and Isurim, the Rabbonans, the Rices. But nevertheless, it's not Karoiloi. And that is part of our problem. That's why Shabbos doesn't have the desired effect of making us holy people. Because if we would, in fact, keep Shabbos. Ketikna, he said, Davzain, the way it should be. Shabbos would have this magical and profound effect on us. How do I know that? Let me share with you a beautiful and magnificent shtikel Torah from the Nesivis Shalom. The Nesivis Shalom was written by the Slonim Rebbe. And even though I consider myself a bona fide misnagid, having spent the majority of my life in a Litvish yeshiva, but you will indulge me a beautiful shtickle from the Slon of Rebbe. When Cain does his Aveira and he kills his brother, the Ibn Islam curses him and he says, No v'nod tiye baaretz, you should wander in the land. Vayemer Cain al Hashem, when Cain hears that verdict, he says, Gadol Avenim in Esai. I can never be given for forgiveness. Hein Garashti, 
Gerashti, you see, Hayoy me al paneho adama, who me panecha as a ser, you've banished me, Vahayisi nod, nod vanod baaret, and I'm going to have to wander without throughout the land, Vahal kalyo, Vahayer kalmaitsi argeni, and I'm fair game for anyone to kill me. The Rebbe Shalom responds to Kayan's plea, Ve'yosem Hashem l'Kayan os. He gave him an os, he gave him a sign, Le'vilti ha'kais ha'isai kol maltzal, so that no one would kill him. Va'yetze Kayan milifne Hashem, and Kayan leaves the presence of the Rebbe Shalom, Va'yesha ve'ertz noid kid ma'zed. That's the chapter there in the Torah. So the Medrash comments on that. So when Kayan leaves the Rebbe Shalom Vayetzi, Kayan Lifnei Hashem, where did he leave? Says the Medrash, Medrash Tanchuma, Mehechan Yotza Paga Bayana Marishan. So his father, Adam Marishan, who also had just committed a grievous chet, and he says to his son Kayan, Nu, Vasi Givarin, Amalei Manasa Bidinecha, what happened to your din? Amalei. He says to his father, Asisi tshuva venis pasharti. I did tshuva and I came to a pshara, I came to an accommodation with the Rebbeine Shalolam. His chilodam arishim mitapeach aponav on arishim because, ah, omar kachi kaycha shal tshuva. Such is the power of tshuva v'anigla yehayisi yedeya and I never knew about this. Miad Adam Omad Adam Harishan Vomar Mizmar Shir Liyema Shabbos. What was Adam Rishan's reaction to this revolution, this innovation, this Chirish Nifla called Tshuva? Mizmar Shir Liyema Shabbos. This Medrash is full of problems. Adam Harishan didn't know about Tshuva. What does it mean? Kain came to a pshara with the Rebbe Shalom. He cut a deal with the Rebbe Shalom. He had a good attorney. And they came to a pshara. Rebbe Shalom doesn't cut deals. But the most troubling aspect of this medrash, the reaction, mizmor shir liyayim hashabas. What does that have to do? Say a say a capital about tshuva. Which there are several of. But Mizmar Shirliyem Ashabas, this is the reaction to what happened to Kayim. So the Nisiva Shalom says that of course there is the Pshuta Shalmikra, but on a deeper level, something else is happening over here. When Cain was given this decree of Nov and Nod, Tia Baaretz, which literally means you'll have to wander throughout the land, Cain's reaction was fear. But not only fear for his physical safety, but on a different level, Cain was worried what's going to be with me? What's going to be with my Ruchnius? What's going to be with my spiritual? being because my relationship with the Rebbe Shalom has been severed. And how am I going to cope? Vahoya Komotzi Hargeni wasn't that he was merely worried about people killing him. But my neshama that was attached to you, Rebbe Shalom, now I've been set adrift. Vosvetzanit my neshama. What's going to be with my neshama? What's going to be with my ruchnius? What's going to be with my spirituality? No v'nod t'yebaretz was not merely a curse that you'll wander throughout the land, but no v'nod t'yebaretz, you're going to have to cope with the artsiest of this world, the physicality of this world, the materialism of this world, the gashmius of the world, the artsiest of this world. That's my problem. Rebbe Shalom, what's going to be with me? What's going to be with my neshama? I'm not only worried about human beings. I'm worried about the temptations of this world, the gashmius of this world, dealing with all that this beautiful physical world has to offer. How am I going to survive? 
says the Rebbeinu Shalom, I'll give you a lifeline. I'll send you a life vest. Something that will help you not to succumb to temptations. Something that will keep you afloat. Vayasem Hashem Ois Lakayin says the Medrash Tanhuma, something only a Medrash can say, that the Ois, the sign that the Rebbeinu Shalom gave Kayin, was he gave him something called Shabbos. As it says, Ki ois hi This is your eighth Zerkai. Six days out of the week, you're going to be in the land, you're going to be in the Gashmias, you're going to be in the Aratzias. You're going to have to deal with the temptations of this world. You are not going to get off scot free. But then there's going to be, uh, be a day called Shabbos. And that's going to replenish your neshama. That's a day of the spiritual and not the physical. A day to nourish your neshama, a day to restore and to rejuvenate. And that's the pshara. That's the deal. Six days, you're going to have to tackle worry. Six days, it's going to be very rough. You're going to be bombarded with all that this world has to offer, and it's going to have an effect on your neshama. But then one day a week, you'll go into therapy. And that therapy is called Shabbos. And that's what Shabbos can do. It can heal and it can restore. You know, a chet, an avera, a sin, has a lasting effect. It does something to the neshama. And just like has to shalom, if a person has a stroke, so part of the brain gets damaged and it requires intense therapy to bring the nerves back and to bring the brain back. That's in the physical world. In the medical physical world, there's a therapy for such damage. The damage of the gashmias and the temptations and the chatoyim and the averis that we may encounter during the week. And that's what Shabbos was for. That's what the Rebbeinu Shalom did for Kayin. He gave him Shabbos. And that's why the Rebbeinu Shalom gave us Shabbos as well. Because he also gave us an neshama. That Yuan from the Kisei HaKovet. That's Chelech HaLokam Imao. And we're out there in the physical world in this hostile environment that's detrimental to our souls. So how are we supposed to survive? Siddhari so Barishlam gave us things called mitzvahs. 248 assays, 240 mitzvahs assays that nourish the soul. But there's one mitzvah that does more for the neshama that does more for the soul than any other mitzvah. And that's Shabbos. And that's why when Adam Arishin heard this, there was only one reaction to this. Mizmor shira liyayma Shabbos ribanesh al oilam. That's the key. Just like you gave Kayin Shabbos, now I can use I can use the same power that Shabbos has. That's why the reaction to this was Shabbos, even though this is all about tshuva. Because it's Shabbos that's supposed to do this trick. There's a Talmud of our yeshiva that for a while was a rov in Irvine, California. Irvine, California is out in the West Coast. It's outside of Los Angeles. And there was a Giyaris in his congregation, a convert. And she used to come to Shalashudis. Now, have you ever been inspired by Shalashudis? By some kichel and herring and stale tuna fish? 
But this Gigairis would come to Shal Shudas, and every week when they would sing Yedid Nefesh, and they would get to the stanza of Nafshi Chaylas Ava Secha, which means my soul pines for your love. Kel no refan no la. Rebbeinu Shalom, heal my soul. This Giyayus would start crying. Like on cue. Tears would run down her face. You know, Geirim must have special neshamas. Because that's why they come back. And this Giyayus, her neshama, apparently felt Shabbos. When the Shabbos was about to end, her reaction was the words of the song. Nafshi chaylas av asecha. I'm sick for your love. Kel no rafa no la. Heal it. Heal my soul. Because her neshama was going back into the Eretz. It was going back into the land. And she felt that on some level. And she cried. Rav Salavechik Tzadik Levocha writes a story from his childhood about Shabbos. This is verbatim. Not far from where our family live, there was a modest shtibol where I would occasionally go for Shalashudas. The Hasidim would sing again and again, B'nei Hechol Hashem Roi Lo Yechzor. It occurred to me they weren't singing because they wanted to sing. They were singing because they didn't want Shabbos to leave. I remember an encounter in this steeple as a small child. One of the men who was singing most enthusiastically, wearing a capota that consisted of more holes than material, approached me and asked if I recognized him. I told him I did not, and he introduced himself as Yankala der Trager, Yankala the Porter. Now during the week, I knew Yankala the Porter as someone very, very ordinary, wearing shabby clothes, walking around with the rope. You know, in Europe, in the shtetl, there weren't cars, there weren't trucks. So there was a profession called a Trager, which he would go ahead and he'd take boxes or suitcases and his only tool was a rope and a strong back. And he would schlep people's packages. This was a job, like a Wasser trucker. There was a, a schlepper. Mamas, literally, Kipshuta Ikamashmo, a schlepper. This was Yankel de Trager. I could not imagine that this individual of such regal bearing could be the same person. Yet on Shabbos he wore a strimal and a kapota. That is because his soul wasn't Yankel the porter, but his soul was Yankel the prince. He had a Shabbos. And it transformed him. It was a metamorphosis from a pasha to schlepper to a regal being. And then, in what must be a classic exchange between the quintessential Litvak of Salavechik and the Mudz Jehosid, well after nightfall, I naively asked him, when do we daven Myriv? He replied, do you miss the weekdays so much that you cannot wait for Myrev? Now 
As I said, I'm a bona fide misnagged. But I envy Chesidim for a couple things. I envy Chesidim for their Shabbos. They know how to do Shabbos. It would not be such a bad idea if once in a while you spent Shabbos in, in Skver for some of these places. Because you see what a Shabbos can be and what it can do for our souls. Shabbos is the key. For it nurtures, it fortifies the neshama for the entire week. But Shabbos is not a magic bullet. It's not automatic. And if we are wondering if Shabbos has this mystical, magical power, so why doesn't it work like on us? And the answer is, because we don't do it right. It has to become a spiritual day. If we use Shabbos just to crash, if you, if you use Shabbos to see how many hours of sleep you can get, if you go to a minion that can do Shachris and Musaf in less than two hours so that you could be back home and hit the sack, then it won't necessarily have the desired effect. You know, Bali Tshuva, people working in Kirov have this program called Turn Friday Night into Shabbos. You know what we need? We need a program called Turn Shabbos into Shabbos. But Shabbos has one major problem. And that is that it comes every week. And it's same old, same old. It's just another child. Rabbi Yankel Bender was once on a trip, a plane trip. And he sat down to a Ro Roman Catholic from Topeka, Kansas. They took out a chumish to be Mavra Sedra. And the fellow says to him, are you Jewish? They get into a discussion. So the Roman Catholic asks Rabbi Bender, again, zealous Shainai, do you have Shabbat, where the lady of the home dressed in her finest clothing stands around candles with children standing next to her, recites the blessing, and the house is filled with a special glow? And the husband comes home and he blesses the children and he sits down at a beautiful table with silver and crystal and sumptuous meal that mom prepared and sings beautiful songs about the Sabbath? Do you have that Sabbath? Yeah, we all have that Sabbath. But apparently this Roman Catholic was exposed to one Shabbos in Topeka, Kansas. Don't ask me how. And he's blown away. This Mishunadik, this is incredible. This is a gift. But for us, same old, same old. And that's why Shabbos doesn't necessarily have the profound effect that it can. So, how do we prove our Shabbos? So I have a couple suggestions. And I may add, in the context of this evening, you all must have felt very close to the Nifter, Chaim Feigenbaum. And at the heat of the moment, a year ago, maybe you were inspired, and we've got to do something. So here's my suggestion. Think about one of these suggestions. And do it. Le'ili nishmas. Yesef chaim yisachar feigenbaum. 
Again, there are suggestions. They're not definitive. You can come up with your own ideas. But here are some suggestions to make Shabbos a little different. Do something or stop doing something to make Shabbos more halig. Maybe daven a little slower. Maybe come to shul and say till him. Perhaps, and this is very important, limit your reading on Shabbos to only Shabbos stick of things. Which is a lot easier than it was 20 years ago. Because if you get Mishpacha magazine, and this magazine, and Bina magazine, and this magazine, and that magazine, so I don't see my wife a whole Shabbos. <laughs> and frankly, I have no interest in the stories in Bina magazine. But they're wonderful, apparently. They're wonderful. And maybe refraining from talking about things on Shabbos that, that are not Shabbos. Day. That the words Shabbos Nishgeret should not pass your lips on Shabbos. And here, this is a tough one. But don't daven in the first minion available, Motsai Shabbos. Don't go to the 36 minute, the 40 minute, the 42 minute, the 45 minute. Go to a later minion. Hold on to Shabbos. What's the rush? The emails will be there on Sunday Shabbos. Trust me. Rabbi Shimshin Pinkus Echroni Livrocho offers another suggestion. And this is something unique about Shabbos. Other mitzvahs, Shaifer, Lulav, Tfilin, Tzitzis, Mezuzah, they all impart Kedusha to a person. But the Kedusha comes from the performance of the mitzvah. Shabbos is different. You don't have to do anything. The Rebbe Shalom Zoch, Ani Hashem Mikad Ishchem, I'll make you holy. You just sit there. There's only one thing you have to do for that magic to happen. And that is prepare for the Shabbos. Anticipate the Shabbos. Long for the Shabbos. Make yourself muhon for Shabbos. Shabbos is the only mitzvah in the Torah that hachona le Shabbos is a mitzvah asay deraisa. Because that's what the Yibar says. It's a present. All I want you is want the present. Show that you want the present. Iker kedusha Shabbos he lemisha roitzes ha Shabbos u mitzapela. Person who wants it, who anticipates it. Lefisha roitzel ledabek bekedushas Hashem is borach. Who if he meets harotzin vahatzafi and commensurate to the mount. That you want it and you look forward to it and you anticipate it. It's not much. And the Chbinish can grace it tzaddik. But since reading that, when we get to the part of Lachadaydi, the last stands of Lachadaydi, Boichala, Boichala. I think we banish long. Give me a little Kedusha. Give me a little Kedusha. I want it. And it'll have a profound effect. The Orachayim HaKadosh on Chumish says on the Pasuk, B'Shomru B'nai Yisrael as HaShabbos. The Rachayim HaKadosh says that the word Bishamru 
in Tanakh can have two meanings. It can mean to keep, to watch, but the Shamru can also mean to long and to wait and to expect. As the Pasik says, Al Derek Shamru Vaviv Shamaris Adavar. That Yankovinu waited and anticipated what's, what's gonna be. Dr. Achaim Akadish that the reward of Bishamru B'nei Yisrael's Ashabas, this anticipation, this tzifiyah, this longing, this anticipating is, L'day roi sam bris oilam. It'll affect your children. Your children will be sharing Shabbos. There's a woman who lives in Highland Park, New Jersey. I've seen articles from her. Maybe some of you know her. Her name is Azriella Jaffe. She started a program, which maybe some of you women want to consider. The program is called Making Chatzais. She started this program because of a comment made by one of her children. The comment was, Oi, tonight is Shabbos. I wish it wasn't Shabbos. Imagine hearing that from your, a child. So what did she do? In many Jewish households, if not most Jewish households, a Friday afternoon in a, in a Jewish home, especially in the winter, but the truth of the matter is it doesn't make a difference winter or summer. It's a place you don't want to be. And that's because it's full of tension and it's full of pressure. So it's no wonder that a child would make a comment, I wish it wasn't Shabbos. So what did Azriella Jaffe do? She started a program called Making Chatzais, that of Chatzais on Erev Shabbos, which in the summertime, in the winter is about 12.15, and in the summertime is about 1.15, with daylight savings time. Shabbos will be ready. Lock, stock, and barrel. My home is ready for Shabbos by Chatzais on Friday. All food is prepared, the house is clean, the table is set, the candelabra is ready, and when my children come off the bus from school, instead of coming home to a Shabbos of chores, a tense mother trying to cook and clean and make the deadline, they come home to a happy mother, a clean house, the smells of Shabbos in the air, and a free afternoon to relax. When my husband walks in the door, from a long day at work, he comes home to serenity, not chaos. But to do chatzais right, you just can't start Thursday night at midnight. You need to plan and prepare for Shabbos every day of the week. My children now think that it's normal to me making a new batch of Shabbos, of chalas on Motsai Shabbos or to be planning a Shabbos menu on Sunday. They are accustomed to asking me if the chicken I'm cooking at 7 a.m. will be while getting them ready for school is for that night's dinner or is it for the upcoming Shabbos. Shabbos is on our minds all week long. When Friday comes around, our house is one of beauty, serenity, and an excited anticipation of the myth of Shabbos rather than the former feeling, oh no, candlelight in time is when? And the children, former feeling of, I hate Arab Shabbos, all we ever do is clean the house, and Ima is always so tense. We started with three women. And when she wrote me this, this is a year or so, two years or so ago, there were over a hundred women. Now we have women from Israel, Canada, England, Australia, South Africa, as well as over the United States and abroad are joining together with the same goal, goal to enter as a household. How about it? Shabbos by Chatzais. Now you men folk here, you laugh. That's a great idea. 
but you have to prepare for Shabbos also. Now, I don't know how old your children are. And this really depends on how many children you have, how old they are, where they are in life. But just like everybody in this room prepared for the Seder night, and nobody walks into Seder night unprepared with something to say, so that's what we have to do for Shabbos. We have to make it interesting for our kids. And we have to prepare for Shabbos, for the Shabbos meal, that it is just not about food. You have to put time and effort into that. To make it gishmak and exciting. I have a former Talmud who's a doctor at NIH, National Institutes of Health in Bethesda, Maryland. He says he works a whole week on making up riddles for his kids. I have a, another Talmud, actually a friend, who says that every child has to come to the table Friday night and he has to say over a chesed that Rebbe Shalom did to him. It's a lot more meaningful than the Parsha sheets, who nobody listens to anyway. But say over what happened to you this week. You know, for those of you who are Baltimore roots, and I have some time meeting here. There was a bakery in Baltimore for many years called Schmel and Asmund. There was a yid named Abe Schmel. He was a baker, a tire yid. His level of learning that he achieved in Europe before he had to go out to work as a child, because he was a yosem, was he was a maver said reid. Nicht a mishnah yid, nicht an ein yank yid, a maver said reid. But he was mahader in one thing. Imagine a baker on Friday night. A baker on Friday night. You've been up since 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. baking chalas. You're an ice geschlagen of shine. And what do you want to do? I want to go to sleep. But he sang Zmiris. Das ist gewesen sein Shabbos. That was his Shabbos. And all of his children are B'nai Taira. Partly due to the Shabbos that they experience as children. Again, those of you with Baltimore roots, there was a fellow who was the principal of Beis Yaakov in Baltimore until he died, unfortunately, rather young, named Rabbi Benjamin Steinberg. His daughter wrote me, and she said, a few weeks after he got sick, he and my mother, he and my brother sang Shabbos Miras into a tape. He wanted to ensure that his Shabbos Nikunin would remain with the family. He sang B'Kayach and B'Neimus for over an hour. Another one of his many legacies. I want to let me tell you one last story about Shabbos and Nigunim. There's a Mechanech who many of you may know. His name is Rabbi Hillel Mendel. His mother, Judith Cohen, that's her maiden name, Mandel, and now she, after her husband died, married someone named Novak. She wrote a book called The Lilac Bush by Judith Mandel Novak. In that book she writes 
of how she was from a, of, she was of a Hungarian family that had six girls and one boy. During the week, they only they spoke Hungarian. But on Shabbos, they only spoke in Yiddish. And she remembers how Shab, how festive Shabbos was. How much singing there was. What a relaxed atmosphere there was. What a wonderful childhood she had. Until 1944, when the Nazis Yemach Shemal marched into Hungary and deported so many of Hungar so much of Hungarian Jewry to Auschwitz. She lost all her sisters in the concentration camp. She survived. After the war, she went back by train with some of the survivors to her hometown. She thought to herself, what am I going for? They got off the train and they decided as a group, a group of survivors, they decided to go to the shul. But you know what they did at the shul? They picked up rocks and they started throwing it at the shul. Because they were so angry with Rebani Shalom that this is their, was their way of showing what did you do to us. A symbolic gesture. Judith Cohen Mandel Novak writes that she picked up a stone and she was about to join them. And then all of a sudden she had a flashback. And she was transported back to her childhood and the Shabbos table. And she remembered the warmth of the Shabbos table and the, sang, the songs that they sang. And she said, how can I leave my old life and begin a new life without Shabbos? And she put down the stone and she didn't throw it and she decided to remain from it. Because what would a life be out leave without Shabbos? And that's what we have to ask ourselves. Do we have the type of Shabbos, type of Shabbos table that our children will remember fondly? And they can say to themselves, how can we have a, a life without a Shabbos? But it's not easy. Like everything in life, it requires preparation, it requires effort and investment. It's for each and every one of us to decide what that investment will be. But I can guarantee you that this is an investment that will bear fruit. Not only for us, but for our children and our grandchildren. Because if it's for Shamu B'nai Yisrael as Shabbos, not only to keep it, but to want it and to expect it and to anticipate it, then it'll be Ledai Raisam Good night.